with tea quilts and I'm here with the pattern that I'm calling Gloria floral giant quilt we're actually taking a quilt block making it big and you can make it into a quilt or you can actually use it as a quilt backing if you like it that way as well that's what I'm thinking about doing with them but I'm not sure yet and my quilt gill is actually doing this project so I thought that I would share it with you as we are working on them. We're probably going to do two maybe three of these in the next year so I thought why not go ahead and make a video. Now the gill just gave us this part here and then I've added the two borders on the side. So let's talk about what you need to finish to make this quilt top and first I want to say if you are using electric quilt and sizing this that it's going to end up in odd size so I have actually cut my triangles here just a little bigger hoping that I can square my quilt top up to an even size according to electric quilt this quilt is let me find it 68 point 91 inches square so that is not something that I want to calculate I either need to get it up to 69 inches as a whole but I really would prefer if I can get this to square up to 70 and a half inches and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that but I know that I will get a brown number instead of a point 91 so what do you need you can go ahead and stop your screen here and take a screenshot. I will probably cut this part out that you're seeing or not seeing and actually put this on my computer screen so you can just take a snapshot of this video to get the cutting measurements. So I'm using three fabrics. I'm using this teal, which you would need two yards. And from that teal, you're going to cut four each 6.5 inch strips from the lengthwise of the fabric. So if it's two yards, it's going to be six and a half by 72 inches. And we'll be cutting those down to fit, but I want to make sure you cut your lengthwise off first. And then after that, you're going to cut one 12 and a half inch square, and then you'll need four six and one half inch squares. For my pink floral, I'm using this fabric. You will need 1.5 yards. You'll need to cut four each, 3.5 inches by length of fabric. So that's going to be about 54 inches by 3.5. So you wanna cut that off the length of your fabric first. Then after that, you're going to cut four each, 12 and one half by six and one half inch rectangles and four squares, 6.5 inches. From your background fabric, which is your white, and I know you can't see any difference here, but I'll just plop it over here so you know it's there. From your white background, you're going to need 1.5 yards. And the first thing you want to cut is two squares that are 26 and one half inches square. Once you cut both of those squares, you want to cut them once diagonally so that you'll end up with four half square triangles. Then after that, you want to cut four each 12 and a half by six and a half inch rectangles and four each six and a half inch squares. So we have our quilt pattern back. And like I said, we're actually going to be making this block in here. So if you can imagine this block here, I'm now going to turn this paper so that we can take this block and have it sit upright. So this is what we are actually going to be making. And I'm just going to use a marker to show you how this is pieced. It's very simple. You just have 
five rows of pieces that you're going to be sewing together. So you have row one, two, three, four, and five. And actually rows one and two are the same as four and five. So I'm just going to cover up some stuff for right now. So basically for your first row, you want a background, a pink, a background, a pink, a background. And so you've got your squares here and then a white rectangle here and then two more squares. And when you make this row number one, just go ahead and make two. Then I'm going to slide down to row number two and let me fold another piece of paper for the top so it covers up row one. So for row two, we're going to need a pink square, a teal square, pink, teal, and pink. And when you do that, you're also going to make two. Next is we have our third and fifth row because we've made four and five already. You're going to use your rectangles, your white rectangles, your pink rectangle, then your teal square, and then your pink rectangle and your white. And so once you do that, you're only going to make one of these. And then I am going to go ahead and sew all of these rows together, like shown here, and then I will come back with the next step. So, I have sewn my rows together, and I also realized that I had a typo on my sheet, and I also told you this number wrong. On your pink floral, you'll need eight each of the six and one half inch squares. And I will make sure that at the beginning of this video that the correct sheet is on the screen because I don't want anyone to take a screenshot at the beginning and then didn't see the rest of the video. But I know that I said four because I was just reading off the sheet, but that's actually a typo. So I'm going to make sure that I give you the corrected sheet on the screen at the beginning. So let's get back to the sewing. I have on my board my rows for row one and two. You actually make two of those the exact same thing. And then I have row three, which is different. Since the pink is alternating in each row, as you can see where it's down, up, down, up, down, I decided to press my rows toward the pink because then they will all nest together opposite when I put my rows together. So here is my second row two, which in this layout is now row number four. And then my second row number one, which is my row number five. So that is my quilt top. And I am not going to show you the next step where I'm just sewing all of these rows together. So that is just very basic sewing. So I will do that and then I will come back with the next step. Okay, I am back. I have sewn this completely together and I have also pressed a crease in the center of my quilt here at the top and here at the bottom. And I now have my 26 and a half inch squares that I cut once diagonally. And when you cut these diagonally, your ruler, your 24 inch rulers are not going to be long enough. I just use two rulers. I just put them, um, I met the ends of the ruler, made sure that each ruler came into the corner. And then I met them in the middle and just made sure that they were aligned correctly in the center. And then I just cut these large half square triangles. So, since I have a crease pressed in the middle here, 
I want to do the same thing with my half square triangle so that I can make these meet up. So I am just going to put my ends together and put a crease right here with my hand and then I will place this right sides together where the creases match and then I would pin for my center and then I would go out and pin on the outside edge too and note that over here I have more than a quarter of an inch Remember, I cut these oversized so that I could square my center quilt top up to a real number so it would be easier for me to add my borders and make sure that my borders were straight. So I am actually going to do that to the top and bottom of this quilt, and then I will come back. Okay, my design wall is not going to show you this quilt top in its entirety so when i actually put the next corners on this top and bottom i've kind of rotated my quilt so you can see the triangles this way but you will not be able to see them on top and bottom but i have my press marks up at the top again and i have my remaining two half square triangles and i am going to put those on the top and bottom so this is what the quilt top that we're making should look like in case you forgot at the beginning where we're actually putting this large block on point so that this white triangle that's in this corner here is actually going to be turned on point when it's done but I just wanted to give you a recap of what it looked like and I am going to go ahead and sew these remaining two half square triangles on here and it's about Let's see, it's almost 2 o'clock a.m. And I probably will not come back with this until tomorrow because I'm going to have to find somewhere that I can lay this out for you. I'm hoping that I can find somewhere or maybe I can go outside on my deck, although it's cold outside. But I want you to see the entire thing. And I will go ahead and square this quilt up to an even size, be it whatever size it is because i don't know what size this square is right now but i will square it up to an even size and i will also tell you what that size is hi it's t it's actually been quite a few days since i've worked on this quilt because of the weather conditions i could not videotape it and it was too large to put on my design wall and this quilt now finishes at 69 and a half inches from edge to edge and it's a square quilt and what I did was I added three inch border first and then I added a six inch finished border after that so I will add the cut instructions for the border and what I did I actually squared my center up to 51 and a half inches and then added my two borders on the outside to make it easier and I can't get it to lay flat I've got leaves all on my deck and I don't feel like sweeping up the leaves so you'll have to forgive that but I did want to come and just show you the finished product <laughs> 